All right, Sister Sunshine, symbolic, doing a response to your response. Um, thank you. It's a great video. Um, I'm going to start with one of the the, um, the latter points that you make. Um, I don't believe that mankind has a greater dignity than the animals. I really don't. And, and I think a lot of what we call our greater dignity is really just a, a feeling of superiority. And I don't believe we're superior or superior to the animals. I really don't. I've seen animals with so much dignity. Um, bears, if you've ever met a bear face to face, they have a lot of dignity. <laughs> You're convinced of that right away, I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> um, oh, wolves. Uh, so many animals have so much dignity, you know, and they're far saner than we are. We're, we're actually very strange creatures. I mean, we, um, we have our highs and our lows when it comes to behavior, you know. But uh, So I, I don't believe we're spirit of the animals. I don't believe we have a greater degree of dignity than the animals. And, and I don't think that... Um, our habitat is privileged and we have a greater right to or a greater natural right to our habitat than uh, the animals have to theirs um, now we'll fight for it of course and we'll use it and you know but um, but I don't think we have a natural right to it you know um, randomness um, I agree with you um, randomness um, I don't consider randomness to be a force of nature. I, I, I think I mentioned in my uh, original video that randomness is just an expression of our, our ignorance. We don't know, if we don't know the cause of something and we can't detect a pattern uh, in its occurrence, we call it random. Um, but what's really going on in the real world are actual forces. You know, uh, it's just that we, um, in our ignorance, we we call something random because we don't, you know, we don't know we can't predict when it's going to occur or where it's going to occur so we call it random um, uh, yeah so let me look at my notes excuse me um, uh, oh you know on intelligent design you know um, intelligent design I don't consider it to be a scientific theory that's why I don't believe that it uh, has a place in uh, science classes um, it's basically a philosophical or philosophical religious uh, theory. Um, science is supposed to deal with the natural world. It's not supposed to deal with gods or God or um, you know the supernatural. It's supposed to stay within the natural realm and explain the natural realm in terms of nature. Um, I, I'm familiar with the uh, argument of um, irreducible complexity and I you know I don't find it to be a very strong argument and again I don't find it to be a scientific theory it 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 it's, it takes the stage of science and it because it's on the stage of science it claims to be science but it's not science it's it's actually looking off the stage saying well see because of this thing here there must be a god there must be a designer you know this must be designed it mu there must be a supernatural cause that's not science. Um, you can dress guys up in lab coats and you can give them a lot of test tubes and you can have them look at little creatures with tails and everything else but as soon as they're saying by God you know there's a God here this could not have been done by nature it's not science so it should not and I don't know how you would give it equal time I mean in essence what it tries to do is disprove evolution you know and how you would ever give it equal time how could you possibly give it equal time? Evolution, you can study all the species, you can study, you could spend years um, teaching evolution. How long can you spend doing intelligent design? Uh, there's no way to give it, you know, equal time. And again, it's not a scientific theory. It's a, it's an attempt to, uh, uh, it's an argument against evolution, but see, those types of arguments based on theology you just have no place in a science class, that's all. Um, Darwinism. Um, um, you know, the, the survival of the fittest, quote-unquote, you know, generally people uh, interpret that to mean the survival of the strongest. I think that's a, a mis, uh, misinterpretation of, of the evolutionary theory. Uh, evolution doesn't say that the strongest survives. It says that the most adaptable, uh, the most adaptable to the existing conditions will survive um, by nature of just the fact that everything else will die off, you know, and it'll be the only remaining group you know therefore it reproduces um, so and uh, and you know we as a species are a culture we're, we're a social species 
you know we're social so we don't just kill everything off and there's no justification in evolution for killing things off um, uh, you know killing off your fellow creatures in fact species that kill off their fellow creatures usually don't survive so um, eugenics is a an abuse a misinterpretation and an abuse of um, evolutionary theory um, do we see do we observe evolution um, I, I don't think we observe great leaps in evolution you know, great leaps in evolution occur due to the accumulation the gradual accumulation of um, uh, adjustments or adaptations you know so it, it something that takes millions of years you're not really going to immediately observe in your lifetime you can't force an animal to make a large change in a lab because it requires reproduction and it takes many 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 generations uh, viruses I know they've done some experiments with viruses and we know that viruses mutate we know that viruses change um, of course, we haven't seen a virus leap and suddenly become something else. But, I mean, if we were going to be able to do such an experiment, I would think we would want to do it with viruses that have this incredibly fast reproduction. Maybe somebody's working on that. Um, I will say, though, that we know that we have dogs. Uh, it seems that dogs descended from wolves. And we can see that, you know, dogs are really a different species now um, um, than the wolf. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they define a different species. I know a real, one real clear definition is that the new form can no longer mate with the old form or the, uh, the prior form or a cousin or whatever uh, because the DNA is no longer compatible. I know we do have some, you know, uh, animals that are half wolf, half dog, but so I don't know. But anyway, I think that's a large enough change. Just the existence of dogs, you know, shows to me that we really can have different species and they're observable in that regard. Um, um, yeah, randomness, yeah, random, I think yeah, I talked about randomness. Who and what created the primordial soup? No one knows. You know, like I said, science is not supposed to answer the why of things, you know. It's, it's, it's supposed to give you the mechanism of how, but, you know, like, this is how it works, but it's not supposed to answer why or the ultimate purpose of things. It's just not what science is supposed to do. Science is supposed to study the natural world in terms of the natural world. That's all. Um, um, so it's not going to do that and it shouldn't do that. That's really the realm of, like I say, philosophy and religion to do that. Um, certainty? Uh, yes, yeah, science is not for certainty. Science is not supposed to um, give one a sense of absolute certainty you know to a limited degree I mean I, I can be certain that uh, the Sun is the center of the solar system you know I mean that was a theory too until we finally got satellites up there and actually uh, shot pictures of it that was something that uh, you know technically had not been observed um, until we got satellites up there but you know all it explained all the phenomena much better than the epicycle uh, Ptolemaic system um, so you know it was it was a theory until eventually it was uh, became an observation you know which was just recently so yeah so science isn't supposed to give us profound certainty it's just not that's not the purpose of science you know uh, science is for knowledge of the natural world not of the supernatural world um, 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 religious certainty that's a subjective thing I believe um, it's not it's not publicly demonstrable in the sense of a logic problem or a, uh, a scientific demonstration in a lab it's just it's in the the subjective realm now I'm not saying that that doesn't make it true or objectively true in some sense but it's just not publicly demonstrable you know um, um, you know people I mean people can testify to their own personal experiences you know that's fine but it's not immediately communicable and publicly demonstrable um, gosh I'm using up the whole 10 minutes who created the primordial soup nobody knows you know I mean science can't answer that why or who created the primordial primordial soup or even whether it was created we just don't know and science really shouldn't go there <laughs> science science shouldn't go there that's religion and you know um, that's for religion and for religious belief. Gosh, the 10 minutes went by really fast. Anyway, thank you very much for your video. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.